Welcome, yogis, and happy nearly Easter for what it's worth. This is, uh, there are no classes over uh, Easter, the Easter weekend, I should just mention that. I mean, there never are, apart from Saturday, but Saturday's not. <laughs> um, I'm back teaching Tuesday morning, so hopefully see you then. But in the meantime, we're here now, which is wonderful news. So we're going to start with a standing position. Remember, if standing's difficult, you can use a chair placed in front of you with the seat facing away. <clears throat> We're gonna start with the feet together or close. Again, if, if balance is difficult, you could always have your feet apart. And the arms are by the sides or if you're holding the back of the chair, obviously holding the back of the chair. <clears throat> the important thing is standing up lightly and straight. It starts with the feet and we work our way up organically and naturally through the body through the crown of the head. And movement in the feet, of course, conditions what's going on everywhere else. What happens in the feet happens in the calves, happens in the thighs, happens in the back. So what happens in the feet happens everywhere else. I'll just check that. I think I've got the volume on. Just suddenly thought maybe I didn't turn it on. You can hear me, okay? Yes, yeah. Okay, great. I'll go back to... <laughs> Back to where I was. <clears throat> you know, they might be swaying around. The hands can be either in prayer, so it makes it Tadasana Namaskar, or as I said before, if you're holding the back of a chair for balance, uh, then uh, no need to take the hands from the chair unless you want to. And breathing easy and natural and organic through the nose, through the nose. Breathing natural and easy and organic. If you're using a chair for balance, you can do the next thing one arm at a time or bring both arms up together. Up to you. A light tone in the tummy and moving around to move everything together into ekagrata. Uh, one, grasping one thing, ekagrata means. So there's a sense where most of us are conditioned to grasp many things. But when we're coming into ekagrata, we're focusing and coming into focusing on just one thing. <laughs> sort of thing is a funny way of describing it because that one thing is the culmination of all things together. So we call it the field. It's a sort of sensitivity to the interdependent flow that the body, the brain, the breath, uh, and everything in the universe is part of. Take a big circle or one arm at a time, if you were doing it one arm at a time, Hands back to prayer or back to the chair, breathing through the nose. Similarly, uh, anyone using a chair can um, keep hold of it because we're going to come to tree pose, which you can do just by turning your foot out like that or cupping uh, your foot over the other knee or bringing your foot up to the top of the, oh, hello, <laughs> the top of the other thigh. So either way, uh, it's fine. And there's a whole host of different stations, as we call them in Vajrasati. There we go. And then breathing through the nose. So you might be holding the back of a chair, your hands might be in prayer, your foot might be lower, or middle or high. But either way, <clears throat> it brings about a waking up of the foot arches. If, you, if the body is not uh, exercised in some way or another, of course, energy gets blocked, gets congested. <clears throat> and that energy is not just physical congestion of blood and lymph and so on but it's the congestion of our nerves themselves and therefore of our minds. So breathing through your nose, jaw soft, eyes soft, chest buoyant if you can. Really good. Okay, it's a great pose to spend a, a while, but we've got the other side to do. So <clears throat> bring your leg down, catch your breath. Again, if you're holding a chair, it's a good opportunity to just move around a little bit. Movement helps on every level. And if you don't use it, you lose it. We know that saying. So it's just good to keep moving. Uh, when ready, again, the foot can be placed on the opposite uh, heel to uh, ankle or cupping the knee or bringing the foot up high to the top of the thigh. And just this connectivity that is between the arches, the three arches of the foot and the various muscles in the leg make a huge difference not just to those areas, but to the back in total, and to the neck and to the shoulders, and even to the muscles of the face. 
So again, you might have your hands in prayer or holding the chair. And again, breathing easy into this. Riksha, three. Or we could call it Padapasana, which would also mean three. Or tree pose. I love tree pose so much because it, it almost um, makes it unavoidable that the body will come online, meaning to say that it comes offline from all the various habituations uh, that it otherwise unconsciously uh, follows. And this is called uh, karma. When we're unconsciously following habituations, that's called karma. Uh, so we hear about this, don't we, the law of karma? Uh, and that's what it refers to. Okay, so good, so good. Release your hands. Uh, place your feet, take a breath or two. Now again, uh, using a chair is super useful if you need it for balance because we're going to take the feet apart. You can be holding the chair. I'm just giving these extra instructions in case anyone uh, needs them because they're quite useful. You could have, uh, for example, the, the chair in front of you like that or the chair, perhaps even better, moved along a little bit because we're going to come into trikonasana. So turn your back toes in, front foot and leg out. If you're using a chair, your hand might come to the seat here or if you, you can have the seat behind you, or the hand comes to the leg, or even uh, the floor. <clears throat> but the movement is a hamstring stretch, as if I need to tell you that, <laughs> for the front leg, as well as other parts of the body coming online. The other arm can either stay on the hip, stretch up, reach around and hold the other thigh, the inner thigh. There's a lot of... Um, Options that are all good options, I have to say. And the breath comes and goes and comes and goes and comes and goes. <laughs> In Trikonasana, like any other standing pose, we explore the relationships between the feet and the leg muscles. And again, it's super important to, to do these kind of uh, standing poses, no matter what, which is why I'm mentioning, you know, even if there are times when they're difficult, uh, we can still use a chair. Uh, and that makes a, a hell of a lot of difference. It makes things that would be diff uh, impossible uh, in certain circumstances possible. So don't, you know, don't give up on doing these poses. Uh, inhale, come on up. Hands on the hips if you want, or maybe you move your chair over. Get it ready for the second side. Back, toes in, front foot and leg out, turning on the ball of the foot, finishing off the turn and the heel. And take a breath or two. Again, if you're using a chair, perhaps your hand will come to the chair seat or even the chair back, whatever's more comfortable, or a little lower uh, towards the uh, shin or uh, if it feels comfortable to the floor. And then the other arm uh, can come up and breathing through the nose and the face is relaxed and the brain is relaxed and where it's a meditation. So the top arm can come up, but doesn't have to. It can stay on the hip. It can reach around and hold uh, the top of the uh, thigh of the opposite leg, which is definitely something uh, I like to do. And then soft brain, soft eyes, and meditative absorption, which might involve uh, movements of any kind. Movements to the inner foot, movements to the outer foot. <laughs> I've never <laughs> possessed the book. Uh, there's a book by uh, Prashant Iyengar called The Alpha and Omega of Trikonasana. I'm sure it's out of print, but I've never owned that book and I'm, I'm sort of intrigued by it because it's a whole book about Trikonasana, which I can understand actually uh, because it's such a rich pose. Okay, inhale, come on up when you're ready. Hands onto the hips, take a breath or two or three or four. Walk your feet towards each other and we're going to come into Adho Svanasana. For that I shall tuck in my t-shirt for the sake of British decency. And <laughs> when you're ready, you know, Adho Svanasana, downward facing dog. Great pose to explore. If energy is difficult, you can do it in two or three stages. You do it for a, you know, a few seconds, a few breaths, have a rest and then come back up. Or if you can stay longer, that's useful too. In the pose, uh, as you, I'm sure you know, we're playing with movement, 
to see if we can find pathways through tense areas. Now, one of the areas that most people do find tense in this pose or tight is going to be the hamstrings on the back of the legs and perhaps also the gastrocnemius, which are also on the back of the legs but lowered down. Both those muscles cross over the back of the knees, so it's not uncommon to feel it on the back of the knees. The back of the legs goes forwards towards the front of the legs, corresponding and connected to the heels going back. So the heels go back, the back of the legs go forwards towards the front of the legs, and the front of the legs go up. As they go up, the top of the front thighs go back, and there's an opportunity to stretch the deep belly forwards. So with the top of the thighs going back, you can stretch the deep belly forwards by sucking in the tummy, pulling forwards the chest as you extend your arms. <laughs> if you get this pose right, and you do that by sending energy up again and again, then you can feel over time like you're being lifted up from the groins, the top of the front thighs, and that enables us to sort of tumble down the back of the body. So waves going up the front towards the groins, Every time you get another wave, you get another opportunity to release the head and shoulders. We we'll come down to a kneeling position. Obviously, the normal rules about uh, using needing a block, please do. If you, if you need one, put one there. And breathing through the nose, eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft. Rolling on the shins can be very, um, very beneficial indeed. So take a few breaths. Keep the eyes soft. Uh, it's a lovely, uh, it's a lovely evening on this Easter Thursday. I'm not sure if there's a name for that Easter Thursday, but <laughs> that's what this is. Uh, if you're not watching the, uh, what well, it's whatever day it is. If you're watching it on YouTube in the future, yeah. uh, but uh, recorded on Easter Thursday. <laughs> Now we're going to come forwards to the forearms. <clears throat> so when you're ready, and your hands are as if we've, we've <laughs> talked about this so many times, hands as if you're holding bunches of flowers, tulips, let's say, because they're seasonal at the moment, or daffodils. <clears throat> and then just a bit of movement with your toes tucked under, the plantar fascia on the soles of the feet gets a little stretch and I think it really needs it, especially if you're someone who does a lot of walking or even driving, even when it's perhaps worse uh, for the plantar fascia. Walking is actually good for the plantar fascia, but still the feet can become uh, kind of muscular tension associated with exercise or lack thereof. Stretch the legs back when you're ready, one at a time, just one first on its own, and play with that. That should be nice and light and manage manageable. And then the other leg, similarly, and a little, uh, a little love. <laughs> so love in the moment is love of the moment. And the moment we call a goddess because she is everything. You know, like the sensations you feel in your breath are co-created by the planet's atmosphere. For example, the atmospheric pressure. So there's a connection between what we call my breath and the whole of the Earth's atmosphere. That's just one example of inter interconnectedness. Now stretch both legs back when you're ready. And similarly, we're going to play between the left and right arm, pelvis bouncing, pelvis moving, <clears throat> breathing uh, dark, deep and honest and natural. And this is very uh, useful for bringing muscles online, which we do partly to take them offline from automatic uh, programming you know, uh, reactivity, we can call it, which is basically kar karma. Reactivity is basically karma. Okay, knees forwards. That's almost certainly long enough. And then sitting up. Well done for staying that long, uh, or not. You're still well done. <laughs> and breathing through your nose, the jaw soft and the eyes soft and the throat soft and the brain soft. Just kneeling. I don't think it can be underestimated. The, the uh, uh, effectiveness of just kneeling because of the compression it places on the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles of the calf and the pressure that goes back from them into the hamstring muscles and the thigh and uh, so on. <laughs> so breathing easy. 
rolling back, rolling forwards, releasing that uh, tailbone. From there, hands and knees, please. And once you're on your hands and knees, a little a wiggle of your derriere, which for those of you who aren't French, is bottom. Uh, as is, I believe, uh, cool or cool, uh, which, uh, yeah, cool. I think I'm saying that right, I don't know. Which means cute bottom, I'm told, by Celine. Anyway, um, either way, wag your bum. And you can feel energy changing on the hand position, different uh, weight ratios on this part or that part of the hand. And of course, this is hydrating the myofascia throughout the body, but not least around the wrist. And that includes the, the connective tissue that goes through the wrists, the carpal tunnels. So it's enormously beneficial uh, for those uh, areas to have some flow to them. Obviously, arteries and veins have to go through the carpal tunnel as well as uh, nerves and tendons, muscle tendons. So just circling and breathing, jaw soft, eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft. Now, when you're ready, bring one knee, let's just say, well, it's up to you, it doesn't matter. One knee to the back of the, its own wrist, say the right knee to the back of the right wrist or the left knee to the back of the left wrist. And then bringing back your other leg so you can bring your foot diagonally across the body stretch back in your own time and because 95 percent people are going to feel more comfortable like this we'll come down to our elbows <clears throat> some people find they want to keep their back toes tucked under some people want them to just point back uh, either way is fine massage it in if you want which might mean might involve um, movement side to side and the purpose of that is to uh, disappear. <laughs> purpose of our yoga is to disappear. Purpose of hugs is to disappear. Purpose of having sunlight on your face is to disappear. Purpose of stroking a cat is to disappear. You know, purpose of stroking a dog is to disappear. Or, you know, to, to look at the yellow of the daffodils is to disappear. You know, whenever there's something good, it's because we disappear in back into the uh, mother back into the field through that ob, uh, ob, um, object through that object so you know yellow daffodils you can stare at them and then just contemplate yellow 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 and open your mind up to yellow and relax around yellow and that yellowness because it's part of the field will take you to the field if you open up to it or that kiss on the cheek, or that, you know, purring of the cat, or, uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, that beam of sunlight coming through the, the window. So breathing, 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 breathing. <laughs> okay, super duper as they say, come back to hands, uh, to the hands being further back, so you're off the elbows, and then bring your back knee forwards and back onto hands and knees. Catch your breath and wag your tail uh, uh, if you want. Wiggle it just a little bit. I think that's part of the song. Uh, and the purpose of movement is the same as the purpose of yellow and of cats purring and of, you know, whatever, it, you know, some, tasting a piece of tasty chocolate. Is absorption, you see. That's the purpose of any of those things, just absorption. Well, when ready, the other knee goes to the back of the other wrist, stays there, the foot moves diagonally across the body, and you stretch back the other leg in your own time, breathing through the nose. Again, the toes can be tucked under or pointing back, and you can come down uh, to your uh, forearms, which I think is useful. And just massage it in if you if you find that useful. I, I just mentioned it because I do find it very useful. And massaging it in is what it sounds like. You just kind of move <coughs> side to side and just feel that uh, those sensations uh, getting absorbed, getting this uh, feeling of absorption going on. Jaw soft, eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft. And as we often say, breath is everything. 
its expressiveness is indicative of our absorption or reabsorption back into the field. Sometimes it's nice to rest the head on the hands or on a brick, or even I sometimes find if I get my thumbs in the right place on my forehead, <clears throat> it's quite nice for the head, but it's also quite a nice stretch for my thumbs. That's obviously might be quite particular, but you know, you never know. You might find that a version of that useful too. But just whatever's useful and useful means it liberates the breath in yoga. We say useful, we mean it liberates the breath. We always mean that. Okay, good job. Well done. Bring the back knee forwards, come back to pat and knee. Well done. Take a breath or two or three or four and wag your tail. Now we're going to come into uh, Gomukasana, which is incredibly uh, unpopular. <laughs> um, I'm actually upstairs and there's carpet here. And I, I, really, I very rarely do yoga on carpet, but I actually quite like it. I was in the Midlands a couple of days ago and uh, stayed in a hotel and did a bit of yoga on the carpet and really enjoyed that. But you might not have carpet, so you can fold your mat in half. Give yourself more padding. I like that because you should have enough softness. What we're going to do, uh, and you might, I should suggest actually that you might want a couple of blocks, um, cork ones if you've got them, but these regular old-fashioned blocks work well as well, to the sides of you, like this. Oh. Uh, because we're going to bring one leg forwards all the way around the other. So I'll just do that again with the other leg in case you missed it on that side. One leg forwards and all the way around the other. And then we work the foot closer this, uh, to the other. So that one we've just crossed round. And you can see I'm doing that in a variety of ways, moving backwards and forwards, massaging through various tissues in that, uh, organic, uh, intuitive. <laughs> Intuitive can sound like a word that's just like a bit, you know, not wise, not sensible, you know, not proven. But of course, intuition is just the culmination of our senses working together to get the right timing uh, for the right movements, the right timing, the right extent, the right breath. Eventually, the feet come close together. And for many people, this station's enough. You could push back a little bit if you wanted. Again, the, the compression of tissue against tissue will help push fluid out and then it will come back in in greater quantities. For some people, this pushing back feels okay to come uh, even to sit a seated position. And this is where you might want to use blocks to take off some of the pressure, like I'm showing you here. Um, but even my, some people feel uh, it can be quite intense. I should clarify that in case you're wondering. On the calf muscle of the top leg personally uh, i'm over the moon if it is because it, it indicates that there's a lot of tension there that is to say there's a there's a strong program being run in that area that's being challenged by this pose in other words the body is sort of preoccupied and when we ask it to do this pose uh, this pose being strong and it, it needs the body, it needs everything about the body. So if the body is preoccupied with a pattern or a program that's run through, uh, that's, that's an expression of uh, views and opinions, then there's a clash. There's a clash. And, and that's a clash of what the body's holding, what the nerves are holding, and what the body's currently doing. And in that clash, there's only two things that can happen. What the body's holding uh, unconsciously or subconsciously uh, eventually it has to release or you have to come out of the pose or, or you do come out of the pose the, the pattern uh, demands it so uh, but obviously we want the latter we want to stay we want to go through the resistance we want to breathe into the resistance uh, and eventually that resistance will get stronger because it's kicking off because it's being challenged it's trying to defend its territory and eventually it will give up because the body can't be run by two masters at the same time. And in this way, we nardi uh, shotana, uh, cleanse our nerves. You can bring the hands to prayer for some who are, uh, find the balance easy, that's fine. Some people even like to clasp the hands, which you could do directly or indirectly. 
remember these are all stations you might be in the station where you're on your hands and knees and that works really really well uh, as well and personally i like to add you know very much enjoy this pose but we'll come out slowly because i know not everyone does like it yet I emphasize the word yet back to hands and knees catch your breath wag your tail breathe through the nose eyes to your tongue throat brain everything soft that can be soft the other leg comes forwards and all the way around similarly um, we work the top leg round the bottom leg until the feet come close as close as you can bring them and that might take however long it takes and then slowly working your way backwards to put pressure back through the calf uh, it may be that you find your station that it's going to be effective in terms of challenging what's running in the body yeah. and so you only need enough that's one of the hallmarks of, of a good yoga practitioner they know what enough is and enough is just enough to challenge to bring up some sort of challenge you know and, and then uh, sitting and breathing eyes soft brain soft throat soft tongue soft Jaw soft. Everything that can be soft is soft. Again, it's for, for some, it's quite unusual, but some people do feel comfortable with the balance. You can bring your hands to prayer or the clasping option. And for one or two, of course, uh, the clasp can be taken with a belt instead of. Uh, with the hands directly contacting each other. If you do take the class, make sure it doesn't push your head forward to keep your energetic flow um, flowing. <laughs> so as I say, eyes, soft brain, soft throat, soft jaw, soft tongue, soft. Great post to stay longer, but <laughs> enough's enough, isn't it? Even of a good thing. So we'll come out slowly without rush, back to hands and knees, wag the tail, breathe through the nose. Suchirandrasana. So take one arm. I'm going to take the one furthest from you and I'm going to bring it through underneath the body towards you. And you can do the same. The other arm extends out to fingertips. And that's already a very, uh, very useful stretch. And for several, uh, myofascial areas so I could talk about you know it's a good stretch for certain muscles but actually you know the, the connections between the muscles are a sort of web of myofascia which is webbed into the web of superficial fascia meningeal fascia visceral fascia so when you feel this you yeah sure we can feel the deltoids benefiting very much but we also feel that through <laughs> into the rhomboids. And we can feel that through into the lavator scapula. And we can feel that through into the various muscles of the erector spinae group. The spinal, uh, spinalis muscles and various muscles that connect the, the, the ribs and the transverse processes. So again, it's a good one to stay uh, a little longer. There is a sort of, uh, you know, get you out of the house, but while you're staying in the house kind of version, which you can bring your arm back. You don't have to do this, it's a bit tricky, yeah, but you could try if you want, and then raise your, other, your leg up like that. It's just bringing a range of motions to a range of different parts of the body, of course. Right, okay. If you did take the leg up, bring it down. But we'll all come up now and take a breath. I'm going to turn around 180 degrees because I still 
very much want to see your lovely face uh, as ever. So hands and knees, wag your tail, breathe through the nose, soften your eyes. Enjoy this moment. This moment is where we're together. Doesn't you know? I've said this before, right the way through this whole. Um, since I started Zoom, you know, which was uh, I don't know when it all started, all that stuff. But um, you know, I, I can feel, and I'm sure you can feel it too, that although there's a separation uh, or a sort of nominal separation, the connectivity remains. I can feel. Uh, you know, we're part of the same field and we can feel each other, right? We can feel that. We, we kid ourselves that you can't possibly feel what someone else is feeling when they're, you know, not next to you or not in the same room, but, but we can, <laughs> we can. Okay, bring the other arm underneath, obviously within the other side, <laughs> and extending out, breathing through the nose. Soft eyes, soft brain, soft jaw. So meditative foci on various energetic flows. Jaw remains completely passive. Just through the eyes and brain. And breath is everything, kind of the way we, we often say it. So it's undeniably good for us to be in this station. And many of us could perhaps feel like we get more out of it the longer we stay. So feel free to stay longer. But there is a sort of variation where we're going to raise the leg that's closest to the extended forward arm by pressing by retracting the extended the, the arm that's extended above our head pushing into it and raising up above the floor again this is where you might want you know a bit of softness under the body this is where i'm i have to admit i'm grateful for the uh, carpet and the underlay underneath it as well Oh, soft brain, soft, that's soft. There's lots of ways in which you can play with this that I find very beneficial, like bending the knee, extending it, and so on. But we'll come down, push slowly and calmly back onto hands and knees, and a little high heel sitting. Now, with the toes tucked under, we can simply push back to the haunches like this, or you can take blocks and Go back a little further if that feels okay, or a little further, or a little further, or a little further, or a little further. And again, it doesn't have to be pleasant. It may be pleasant, but it may not be. Uh, it, you know, it's just effective to stretch the plantar fascia. And sometimes the plantar fascia is very tense, and there, uh, there's a lot of patterns or habits or assumptions in our nervous system that this uh, really challenges. So, you know, it can be uh, challenging. <laughs> Eyes soft, breathing through the nose, brain soft. Enjoying your life. Eyes soft, breathing through the nose, brain soft. Okay, I know it's tough, so we'll call it a day with that one. <laughs> Stretch your legs out in front of you. <clears throat> and many of us will find it much better to sit on uh, more two or more blocks. If you've got two blocks, they can be short end to short end, and you're sitting on them, short end to short end, and that will give you blocks for the hands as well. So you'd have your bum on two blocks, short end to short end, and you can have, if you ha happen to have more blocks, you could have another layer of, on top of that if you wanted. Sometimes uh, for some people, when they go up higher, the knees tend to collapse, a little uh, energy collapses there or the knees overbend. If that's the case, you'll put a neatly pleated blanket underneath the back of the knees, uh, to support them. Uh, either way, whether you're uh, sitting on blocks, which is probably best for, for most of us, or sitting straight on the floor, the hands will come next to the hips and we'll stretch the chest back. We're not going to overwork it. We're going to keep things soft. It's just like with pastry. <laughs> it, you know, you can overwork it and it becomes hard. 
And similarly with the body. If you overwork it, it becomes hard. It doesn't, it's no, no longer malleable. So you want to work in a way that doesn't overwork, a way that's gentle, spacious, investigative, even meditative. Moving left, moving right, <clears throat> and so on. Shoulders stay back, head stays up. Breathing is through the nose, preferably, if possible. Deep, expressive, organic, natural breathing. This is Dundas, and there's so much to this pose. The, the central piece of it is keeping the spine upright without overworking it. So movements left and right can help us to avoid that overworking mentality and help us to stay soft. In addition to this uh, light lift, we can feel what we sometimes call drop lifting, which is something so instantaneous that it is like dropping a stone into water and seeing the water rise up as a result of the stone going down, like you might see on a slow motion documentary, a stone drops, and as it drops, water rises up, a direct correlation. What is dropping here? At the top of the thigh bones, boom drop, boom, they drop, and then boom, we lift, or rather there is lift, we don't lift, there is lift, so boom, drop, lift, and people, <laughs> you might think, well, how do I drop, you know, you don't, you just stop holding it up, you just boom, concentrate on the area of the top of the thighs, and let go, head should be in line with the spine, shoulders should be back, Chest should be upright. Back muscles are meditatively lifted, investigatively moved. Oh, well done. Okay, it's a strong pose too. Let's come out of it. And we're going to come down to something that's very popular, which is laying on the back. And I'm going to keep some head support. And I recommend that for you too, unless you know you're happier without it. But a lot of people will find it useful. And just resting on the back is very useful in and of itself. You can have your hands on your ribs if you want, breathing through the nose, lower back soft, eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft, tongue soft. Flex up the hips, open up the knees, reach through and hold the big toes, then bring your head back down again. Have a bit of a roll about if you want, roll here, roll there. And as ever, looking for that well, I can't do, you know that wasn't a glitch when I went silent. It was the only response that I, the only sort of way I can express what it is we're looking to find is through silence or at, at best uh, proto language, you know, expressives rather than descriptives. Expressives rather than descriptives. You know it's right because you can follow the Vajrasati <coughs> three pointers, Lila, Arta, Lakshana. It's a very easy system, Lila, Arta, Lakshana. Lila is play, play. Why are we playing? What is the purpose? Well, the word purpose is Arta. And the purpose is absorption in the field, in the mother, in the interdependent. And then Lakshana is signs, in other words, affirmations, signs that we are absorbed in the um, mother, in the field, such as feeling absorbed, it's an obvious one, such as the breath becoming expressive, hmm. such as doubt diminishing, and intuition going up exponentially. A couple more breaths. Sometimes you want to pause on one side, you find a good moment there. Sometimes you want to pause on the other side, you find a good moment there. So just looking for these moments. <clears throat> and then when you're ready, 
and releasing feet back down, scoot the buttocks under, take a breath or two. So that's very simple. Raise a leg up. That's it. <laughs> and dorsium plantar flex the foot. So that just moves the myofascia and the superficial fascia and the meningeal fascia. And well, that's it, actually. Those three fascias. And through the, but not so much the visceral fascia, which it probably has some effect on, I should think. Just try and feel if it does. But well, it certainly does on uh, some of the lower organs. One can feel a little pull on the uh, lower organs, such as the bladder or reproductive organs. Okay, heel in, toes out, cross that leg over the other. You got it? Great. Some people, uh, my personal preference is to push my foot beyond the ankle. So I'm on the flat part of the fibula. Then I'm not sticking the ankle in. Then I'm on something more stable, something more reliable in terms of feedback. Uh, that just helps. Some people um, find that it depends on the length of the leg to some extent. They want to stay on the ankle to get a, a more spacious feel for them. Well, that's okay if that works for you. Either way, lift your head, plunge through, interlace, roll around. That's all. <laughs> Look for there again. That was that was another moment, uh, not a glitch, not a cut out of the sound, but just the you know, I, I went there, I found what it is I wanted to describe to you, and it stripped me of descriptive language. That's the best way I can describe it to you. So, we could, could call it richness. It's breath centered. That much, that much we do know. So rolling this way, rolling that way, looking for the good stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, you can find some real good stuff. So the you know the closest to language we can get with these sensations is expressive language, oohs and ahs and old gods and wows and whatever it is that spontaneously comes out. Good job. Okay. When you're ready, slow and easy release. Place your feet on the floor. Scoot the buttocks under. Let's hear some deep breaths from everybody, please. That's it. Let them flow. Let them flow. Let them flow. Let them flow. Raise up the other leg. Dorsi planter, dorsi planter, dorsi planter, dorsi planter, dorsi planter. Any other movements you want? before turning the heel in, toes out, crossing that leg over the other. Obviously, it's the same sort of thing. Getting the feeling right, which is, you know, uh, absorption. It should feel absorbing. And that we know that absorption is great because there are always signs of absorption. When you absorb, there are signs. And then <laughs> plunge through, interlace, and roll around. So you might roll to the left, you might roll to the right, looking for... Uh, you know, a juicy sensation of some kind. That's what we're after. When you hit it, you know you've hit it because it's Beyond Tat Param Purushakya Terguna Vajrishnam. Tat Param Purushakya Terguna Vajrishnam. Tat Param, that beyond, that unsurpassed. Purushakya Ter, the person who knows that beyond. Guna Vajrishnam is beyond thirst, is satisfied in regards to the normal elements of conditioned existence. Groovy, though it is, so stay longer, <laughs> we'll come out. Place the feet on the floor, catch your breath, two or three or four or five, scoot the buttocks under, just catch your breath there. For a few deep breaths, just better shut this door, keep banging. Great. 
raise up your legs when you're ready, both of them together. Now, some people would like to bend the knees, extend the knees, shake the legs, swing the legs. So healthy, so healthy, this kind of very basic stretching, very basic, very healthy. Now we're gonna take the head support, or at least one of the head supports out from under our heads and see if we can touch the toes or the shin, right? Or whatever you can get to. Uh, some people like to experiment with putting the block on the feet. That's something that can be fun. <laughs> or just as I say, touch the toes you know, with like this, something very basic. Again, I'm just holding a block with my fingers or uh, lower down. There's a variety of places you could place a block. But really, it all comes down to the breath, which should be expressive and, and natural. Expressive and natural. So this is Udva Prasrita Padahasana. Very simple, very effective. The release of the hamstrings takes time and it's co-conditioned by the tone or lack thereof in the quadricep uh, muscles on the front of the legs. Great, okay. Um, again, it's one I could stay in a while. I enjoy it very much, but bring the block down and hug the legs and have a, a little, you know, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> have a little moment. <clears throat> so rolling left, rolling right, <clears throat> looking for and the sensations that are appropriately rich for you. And that keep the eyes soft, <coughs> that keep the brain soft, that keep the tongue soft. Okay, <laughs> so good, so good. Let's bring the feet back down slow and easy to the floor. And we're going to roll over. Hopefully you can onto your side facing uh, towards the screen. Check the time. The time does go fast in these sessions. It is going fast. So we're going to lay uh, on our sides. Heads towards the, uh, well, if you want towards the screen, doesn't have to be. The evening draws in and extend the bottom ribs. So that's very beneficial in and of itself. <laughs> Again, the pressure uh, from stretch and from pressure both help with the, the job of rehydration, which causes glide. And that because we're yogis, we know that what happens on one level happens on all levels. If there's glide in the Maya fascia, <clears throat> then it will correspond to an easefulness that we could call mental glide or non-attachment right so we don't often translate non-attachment as mental gliding but that's what it is so we're rolling now uh, optionally but i would recommend rolling forwards rolling backwards just looking for sensations that are um yeah that, that are rich enough Rolling forwards, rolling backwards. And again, uh, you know, this is enough, isn't it? I could do this rolling for ages. You know, if you understand the yoga vibe, then you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean, that you can do it for ages because it's so rich. It's, it's not, you're not trying to achieve uh, something externally uh, validated. But instead, what we're trying to achieve is uh, this sense of softening our edges that returns us to uh, the identity or rather allow us 
thoughts, emotions, and physical sensations to return to their true identity as part of a one field of a conditioned co-production. <laughs> Sorry, that sentence is quite a big thing, isn't it? Quite a big sentence. One field of conditioned co-production. <laughs> Again, you know, one could roll like this for a long time, but we're going to bring the top leg up when we when we feel balanced enough. <clears throat> we're going to play between the horizontal and the vertical planes, looking for some release in the areas like the inner groins. Uh, looking for a little bit of intelligent or responsive tone on the outer thigh. And eventually, through these kind of movements, we work the leg up to the upright position where we then reach through and hold the big toe, but try to be disciplined to reach your hand to the foot, but not so much the foot to the hand. The foot doesn't turn in towards the hand, it stays where it is. And we take hold and then begin to play with the leg it can be extended or bent or whatever you know uh, there's lots of uh, different movements that one can take one can play with uh, keep the eyes soft brain soft throat soft tongue soft jaw soft everything soft that can be soft okay All right, you could say, I know all of these poses are useful. Let's just have a moment, knees up, head down. Expressive breath through the nose. Come up from the side, using your arms. Oh, yes. And we'll go back the other way. <laughs> so same sort of thing. This is Anantasana, the serpent couch of the Lord Vishnu. Extending the bottom ribs, rolling, forwards, rolling, backwards, looking for sensations that are uh, enough, you know, to eat you. That's all we're looking for, sensations that are enough to, to eat us. Sometimes you can find something very juicy if you roll really far forwards. Or, you know, after just a little roll, you might find it something very juicy. Mm -hmm. As it gets richer, the breath becomes more expressive. This is one of the Lakshana. Remember that little three piece, the Lila, Arta, Lakshana, Lila, Arta, Lakshana, play, investigative movement for the purpose, so that defines how we play, of absorption. That's the Arta, that's the purpose. Lakshana, signs that it is absorbing should be noticed, like, oh, you know, it's absorbing. Just that's a simple sign, feeling absor absorbed. When you're ready, top leg comes into place, as just like we did before between the horizontal and vertical planes, bringing the leg eventually uh, comes up to the uh, vertical plane. And then again, we'll try this discipline of bringing the hand to the foot more than the foot to the hand and breathing through the nose. Eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft, tongue soft. Breath is everything. So the yogini, she rests, fully rests in the breath, like she's sort of melting into a warm bath or something sliding into a warm bath. It's similar uh, to that. And then there's the options to experiment with uh, raising the leg or not. So this is Anantasana.
breath is everything. Expressive, honest, meditative, natural. I'm sure we could disappear quite easily, but at times running fast away. We'll have a moment as we come down for a breath or two or three or four or five or six. We can keep our legs over to the side like this and bring ourselves up for a little twist. Breathing through the nose. Draw soft and then just come up from the side. Repeat that same twist on the other side. So it's just a knees up and turn around. You keep the knees up. Jaw soft, back soft, eyes soft, brain soft, throat soft, tongue soft, etc., etc. And then curl up from the side. If you've got a brick block, use that. Uh, if you're comfortable, that is to sit in Siddhasana, which is what we're going to sit in, or two uh, regular foam blocks with a short end facing forwards, or as I say, a brick block uh, otherwise. And uh, we're sitting in Siddhasana for those that are comfortable to sit in Siddhasana, heels alone with each other in the midline of the body. But it's fine to sit in a different posture if that's not comfortable. For example, sitting in a chair, whatever's comfortable. Attention into the heart center, eyes closed, brain soft. <coughs> So imagine your heart center is a, is a place, a realm, if you like, that you can rest in where everything is everything. All beings are all beings, where there's a field which, which connects us all, where it doesn't matter how far away we are from each other, we can still feel each other as if we were in the room, as if we were holding hands. Our thoughts are known to each other. Our emotions are known as if they are our own. <laughs> and we'll chant, may all be happy, may all be healthy, may all see goodness, may there be no worry. The good thing about this little chant is it's in complete alphab alphabetical order. May all be happy, followed by may all be healthy, followed by may all see goodness. And finally, may there be no worry. We chant it together. The actual musicality of it's very simple, even if you've never heard it before. May all be happy. May all be healthy. May all see goodness. May there be no worry. Now, Om together. Oh. Take deep breaths. You are love. You're made of love. Everything around you is love. Mm -hmm. <sighs> This is what's perceived by the open mind, the mind with soft edges. We're fine, we're softening our edges completely now in Shavasana. So we're just going to melt entirely by laying on our backs. So go ahead when you're ready. Make sure you're warm. Make sure you're comfortable. Make sure you're laying symmetrically. A blanket can be placed over you if you wish, or a sarong or something like that and uh, some support under the head can also be helpful. Palms up, the arms shouldn't be close to the body, we know they should be quite a good distance away.
And as I mentioned, it's a melting, it's a melting posture. And sometimes it's even called layanam, uh, melting, or it's described that the practice is there for the purpose of melting. Skin soft, brain soft, throat soft, tongue soft. The more we give, the more the edges feel softer. And there's this sense of merging, melting, lionum. Returned to the source, our senses now at one with all things. Our sense of identifying no longer clings to thoughts, feelings, emotions, physical sensations as mine, now realizing that they're part of a field, now experiencing them as part of a field. Instead, we fall into our true nature. This is called kaivalyam. Each experience that of the essence nature rests in its final resting place in edgeless, ageless, timeless, selfless, bliss, peace, space, tranquility, complete peace. And the goddess who's made of all the thoughts in the universe, all the emotions in the universe, all the sensations, all the winds, everything, dances as one without us trying to take little chunks out of her to appropriate for ourselves. She dances freely again. Kaivalyam. The isolation, the separation, the spontaneous realization of what's called purusha, a real self, the real person, Purusha means person. Now clear as ageless, deathless, timeless. Juxtaposed against the goddess who is one, free, ever changing dancer. Play as long as you wish. And at the time that you feel ready, which could be now or, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes time. We'll feel into the body with wiggling toes and fingers and other stretches. That culminates with eventually feeling ready to bend the legs. And then eventually, after scooting the buttocks under and resting the back in the breath for two or three breaths, we will or uh, we are, we will or we, or we are, now rolling onto the left side with knees drawn up and tummy soft. After which we will or we are rolling over to the right side, we eventually we let in light and color and sound and sensation before we come up easefully from the side. So for those of you laying on, <coughs> um, it's okay, we're, we're interdependent so you can uh, Om, when I say this next line, just from where you are inside, or if you're sitting up, you can om uh, 
you know, sitting up either way. May the merit gained in our acting thus go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. Oh. Hmm. Thanks, gang. Um, back on Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. for anyone who's a yoga headbanger, likes to come at 7 a.m. on a Tuesday. Uh, otherwise, the next Thank one will you, be James. this time next week because there's no class on Saturday. But um, thanks, y'all. <laughs> Great to see you. Love you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah.